Hey, Mike from Church Helper here. Today, I'm going to take a few minutes to update you on some of the exciting things that are happening at Church Helper and how they're going to benefit you over the next few months. So, if you'd like a pathway to long term help for your church and you'd like to have the confidence that you're making every decision on purpose, then stick around because we're getting started right now. Well, hey there, and welcome back to another edition of Church Helpers Weekly Content. Our mission here at Church Helpers is to help churches make every decision on purpose. My name is Mike, and I'm excited to help you do that today, so let's just get into it. And today, I'm going to spend a few minutes just letting you know what we've been up to so far here at Church Helper and where we're headed in the months to come. And I would encourage you to stick around through this whole episode because there's some stuff at the end that's gonna be really relevant to your staff and your elders teams moving forward. But first, I'd love to give you a little bit of backstory. So as some of you know, we launched Church Helper in October 2020 after working with a small group of churches in Ontario between 2017 and 2020. And we felt passionate about the work that we were doing and we wanted to find a way to continue to support churches on the elder and staff levels. Now, it was a quiet start for Lauren and I here at Church Helper. We continued to work with a few churches on various projects, and then in the spring of 2021, we decided it was time to start creating content sort of for broader use, hence the beginning of our blog and the Church Helper podcast. Now, over our first few weeks, we focused on creating content that laid the foundation of our beliefs and our mission to help churches make every decision on purpose. And we've done this for you so that you know where we're coming from. But we've also done it for ourselves to make sure that we're accountable and we make sure we approach everything here at Church Helper with a clear mission and a clear purpose. And here's where I'll say this. If you haven't spent too much time listening or watching our content so far, I would really encourage you to do so because whether you're a church of 20 or 2,000, the concepts that we've laid out are foundational to every church. And we know from experience that there's a lot of churches that are really struggling with them. And if every staff member and elders team can differentiate mission and method and recognize when a mission starts to drift, then those churches are going to be a lot healthier and more effective. Now, speaking of elders, they're the big reason for what I'm talking to you about today. Over the past four years, I've spent most of my time working beside and encouraging not only staff, but elders. And through that time, I've learned a lot about eldership and the unique relationship elders have with churches and with their staff. And I should clarify because I know denominationally, some of you might call this group something different. So when I say elders, what I mean is the group of people that your church elects to carry out spiritual guidance and set your church's mission and direction. Maybe it's deacons, perhaps you call it a board of overseers, but for our purposes today, we're just going to call them elders. And elders usually have a ton of responsibilities, especially in smaller churches. They oversee hiring of staff and any other staff issues. They're in on mission and vision conversations. They spend spiritual direction and programming. Uh, they do reviews and present annual reports. And they're the caretakers in the last eye on the budget. And they field congregational concerns. And they do pastoral care. And they do all kinds of things. Elders are so busy. And so with that in mind, what Church Helper did is we put out a short survey asking elders the most unexpected or challenging parts of their role. And here's some of the stuff that we received. One person said they didn't expect that they would be, quote, dealing with someone who's been an elder for over 40 years and ruling the roost. Another said their biggest challenge was ensuring solid communication with the congregation. Uh, another elder said that they struggled with why ministers fall into the trap of thinking they're the only leader. And then this person said, I think they give up on the dream of working as a team after all the resistance from people to get involved that they get. Finally, one church elder said their biggest surprise was this. He said, quote, the amount of time devoted to being an elder. When I accepted the call, I was assured by an existing elder, don't worry, it won't take up too much of your time. It's just going to be one meeting per month. <laughs> 
And there were more statements like these too. Topics included better understanding of what staff go through, how to manage expectations, how to short-term and long-term plan, and when to give up on an idea. And so here's why I'm talking about all this. We know that the most critical decisions in any church at some point always go through the elders. Whether they dreamed it up or another staff member brings them the idea, the elders see almost everything that happens in a church. And we think it's imperative that elders feel equipped, energized, and confident about those decisions that they're making. So for the next few months, Church Helper is going to dedicate a lot of time to helping equip elders to lead their churches with confidence and with enthusiasm. We're going to create a lot of content and resources that will be helpful to staff, but will be geared towards elders. And we're going to start conversations with as many elders as we can to try to make their jobs a little bit easier. And we're going to start doing all of this next Tuesday by starting our four-week series called Getting to Know Your Staff. So many elders I've talked to have trouble with knowing what a worship pastor or a children's pastor or a church administrator does on a day-to-day -day basis and empathizing with what they're going through. So that's where we're going to start. And to prepare for this, we've also spent some time talking to church staff members and gathering a list of things they wish their elders knew about them and their jobs. And I'm telling you, this is it's some really good stuff. I think you're really going to enjoy it. So here's how you can help. If you're a church staff member, please forward this video, podcast, email, however you're taking in this content, to your church elders right now, right away. Let them know how to subscribe to our content so that next week they start receiving new ways to strengthen their relationship with you. And if you're a church elder, now is the time to forward this to the rest of your elders team. And if you'd like to take one extra step and you know elders in another congregation, you could always forward it and help their churches out too. These next few months are all about elders. They're all about you and we want to make sure that as many elders as possible get the help we know that they need. So, Thank you so much for coming along with us so far here at Church Helper. We want to be we want to be a group that's helping churches make every decision on purpose, and we know there's a much bigger chance of that happening when we support elders. Now, if you're an elder and you have a topic that we should cover or a resource that you think would be helpful, we want to hear from you. Please send us an email at hello at churchhelper.ca post on our Facebook or our YouTube, visit our website, book a time to chat with us, just get a hold of us. We want to get that idea and put it in your hands. Thanks so much for engaging with us today. Make sure you like and subscribe the podcast or this video. Sign up for our weekly email list so you don't miss another week of our free and helpful content. And we can't wait to start helping you and your elders team next week. We'll talk to you really soon.